Look at how orange the sunrise is on the Oregon coast this morning. Well, central Oregon coast. I'm wondering if all those clouds are going to light up. There's the bridge, Sayushla River Bridge. Look at that. Wow. It's incredible. Praise God, it's just like a blanket of orange and soft white. Very beautiful. Hey, it's a tough life, you know. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, you can see them up there starting to turn color, see? As I drive south towards Coos Bay. Well, actually, I'm... Uh, the next town would be Reedsport. Yeah, those clouds, are, those poofy clouds are starting to... become pink little fur balls. There's the mini golf place. They have a cross and a nativity scene up every year. I hope God blesses their business for doing that. Look at how pink that is right above my window here outside. Wow. I wanted to show you the sunrise off of this lake. Isn't that beautiful how the pink clouds, well, they're kind of yellow now. And then the reflection of the trees along the lake there. And, um, yeah, it goes way, man, it's a huge lake. I'm sitting in Nye Beach, N-Y-E, Nye Beach, Newport, Oregon. Now, it is kind of a king's tide, high tide here. There's people from all over visiting for Christmas. They come back to see their parents or whatever, you know. I'm just going to let this roll and do the Bible study. It's 11.20. In one hour, it'll be high tide. Hopefully no one will do anything weird in front of the camera. They don't even know I'm here, actually. Nye Beach is a whole different animal. It's like most of Newport is a real conservative working type 
you know, middle class to lower middle class, and then you come down to Night Beach, and it's all of a sudden like a bunch of, um, you know, the arts, artsy, the hippie type, college type, you know. This is where, um, you know, artsy, liberal college people come to, re you know, live their, their lives like this. The rent out here is probably like 1500 a month, but... And they got a few shops up there, but mostly it's like food shops or... It's a beautiful place. It's a great place in, in the summer to go hiking and um, bicycle riding, you know, whatever. Okay, we're on chapter 7. That which defiles... What are, what are the things that defile you as a Christian is what Jesus is going to talk about here. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. Well, they were spying on him, yes. And saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. Now, this was also in Matthew. That's why I said Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John repeat themselves a lot. But also it proves that they're in agreement with each other. So, they're saying... I mean, you want to talk about how backwards these people are in their thinking. And when I say backwards, I mean they're backwards in the sense that Jesus is doing all these wonderful things in the world. And they're following him around, spying on him trying to trap him because the disciples didn't wash their hands? Have these people never been on a farm? I mean, I've seen pig farmers, cattle farmers come in off the... They got actual hog crap on their hands and they go in t inside and just start eating their dinner. <laughs> They're looking for a way to accuse Jesus so they can have him killed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Now listen, did you hear that, what that actually said? These people are racist. Now, but on a different level. These people are elites... And they think you are below them, beneath them, like under their shoe, so to speak. Now, it said when they go to the marketplace and they will buy these things from the merchants, right? Now, maybe some of the merchants were Jews, some were Gentiles, you know, some were filthy, you know, people like me. They'll smile at you and buy your stuff, but when they go home, what do they do? When they go home, what do they do? They make sure they wash their hands. Why? Because they associated with that filthy guy named Dave. I'll just use myself as an example. I may have sold them a fresh baked loaf of bread. And they, they like Dave. They buy Dave's bread because I, I make the best bread. And also, it's 50 cents cheaper. 
So I know how to get rich guys to um, shop and buy my bread because they like lower prices. They will not admit it out loud, but they will buy the thing that is cheaper because they are cheapskates. You know, on a side note, you want to know why some people become rich and others become poor their whole life? The, I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth might astonish you. Rich people say, I become rich because I'm far more superior in my thinking and, and the way I live than everyone else. So I manage my money better and I become rich. And poor people are poor because they have far lower superior because poor people have lower, lower levels of thinking. See, we categorize everybody. That's what racism is. We categorize black people. We put black people into, do you see this sparrow right here? There's a sparrow right there. And this guy's throwing out bread to all the seagulls. And all these seagulls are fighting and clawing at each other to get a piece of that bread. And the sparrow is calmly and patiently waiting. And when this man leaves and all the seagulls fly away, the sparrow knows something that nobody else knows. The sparrow will go down there and pick up the crumbs from the bread that fell and we'll get the sparrow will have an entire belly full of breadcrumbs. So who is wiser, the sparrow for waiting or these stupid seagulls for clawing at each other over a piece of bread, you see? So these these um these people that have these traditions because they are convinced that they are wiser than you, they are more holy than you, they are better than you, they are, they are more elite than you. So let me finish. Well, if, if that, along with their thinking, that means you have to be a piece of crap below them. So I'll ask you a quick question. Why are you chasing these people? Why are you giving these people authority over you in America, chasing them? Well, I want to be rich like them. Oh, you have no idea how uh, most rich people have all kinds of freaky things going on in their head all day. But I want to go back to how to become rich. Because I said the truth might surprise you. You might not even believe it. Do you know those people who became rich, they made about the exact same amount, amount of money you do working for someone else? I'm going to say this because it's true. Poor people are poor, not because they're stupid, but because they spend all their money immediately. That's why they are poor. Rich people are rich. They spend almost no money. They save all their money or they invest all their money. And over the last 50 years in America, the stock market has been a great investment, things like that, corporations, companies. It's not like that anymore, no. It's not. It's going to all collapse. You don't even know which corporation is going to do well tomorrow. You don't know who's going to, are we going with electric vehicles? Are we going back to gas powered vehicles? Is somebody going to invent a, an engine that um, is far superior to both of them? Just runs on salt water. See, you don't know. So it's hard to invest it's hard to put money in an investment and hold it there for 10, 20, 50 years, 30 years. 
Poor people are poor not because of their lack of intelligence. Most poor people have more common sense, street streetwise. They're poor because they spend all their money. Poor people, and people without money live in lower apartments, cheaper apartments. People without money buy their clothes, you know, in lo used secondhand places. People without money eat junk food, bad food. And it's all because they made the decision that as soon as they got money, they're going to spend money. Watch the rich person. Watch the rich person next time. The rich person you know. Whoever you know that's rich, watch them. Watch them. What are they doing? They might be sitting, looking at a book or something, having a, a cup of coffee or tea. That's all they're doing. Okay, they're spending less than you. Well, what about that big fancy car they have? Well, they probably actually paid cash for it. And then they rolled it into one of their businesses as a tax break. They end up getting that $70,000 car for $30,000 in the long run. They pay no interest on that car. You pay interest on it. A rich person never carries a balance, a debt on their credit card ever. They only get credit cards that pay them cash back every month. They run their entire lives through those credit cards, never pay one dime in interest ever. And at the end of the year, they cash in their four or five cash back credit cards and they get like 800 to $1,200 at the end of the year, free money. Free, completely free. But these people that Jesus is talking about, it's not about who's rich and who's poor. It's about how you think. These people are elites. That's why I said they're racist people, but not on a race level of white or black. They are racist like Financial race, society race. They think someone like me would be a scumbag. And they are great. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why do your disciples live according to the tradition? Why don't your disciples, why do not your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders? Instead of eating their food with defiled hands. Now that's funny. They come to Jesus and say, Why are your disciples not living according to what the elders tell them to do? Okay, they are the elders. You see how they put themselves in charge? They could have just said, How come your disciples don't do what we tell them all the time? No questions, and then just give us all their money. How come your disciples are not becoming our slaves? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's a form of racism, but it's class racism. They consider themselves at a much higher, more um, wealthy class high class. They consider someone like you and I low class. They consider Jesus low class. They consider Jesus like a bum, a hippie, a sluggard, the devil. And, and he had all these other bums and hippies following him around all day. They could, The teachers and the elders, they consider Jesus and anybody who followed Jesus to be low class scumbag. Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating food with defiled hands? Well, they are the elders. How convenient. Jesus replied, 
Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. Bam. Jesus turned around and punched him right in the face. Verbally. He verbally just outsmarted him with one sentence. Isaiah, he was a great prophet. He was right about you hypocrites. He just said it right to their face, right in front of everybody. You are all a bunch of hypocrites. That's what I said. If I was down there selling the bread, they would come to Dave's bread shop. They would buy my bread, smile, give me compliments. But when they went home, they would wash their hands like three times. They, oh my gosh, I was it. I was Dave actually shook my hand and defiled me. Ooh, I got to scrub this Dave, Dave germs off me. <laughs> and, and notice I'm not laughing. This happens every day. Where you go in today's society, 2023. The other day I was at Walmart. You know, some people starting to wear masks again. I was at Walmart and I coughed. You know, I had to cough. I know I'm 61 years old and I coughed out loud. Oh my goodness. I coughed in public. And like five old ladies looked at me and moved away from me like, oh my gosh, he coughed. Um, yes, coughing is natural. It helps you clear your throat. <laughs> it's a natural thing to cough. As soon as I coughed, now check this out. As soon as I coughed, they classified me as a lower type scumbag. I coughed. And in these old ladies' eyes, that I became a scumbag. And I said to them, so does this mean we're not going out to dinner? No, I'm just joking about that. Just seeing if you're paying attention. I'm telling you, we live in a class society. Love your neighbor. Love the widow. Love the orphan. Love the poor. Help the poor. Give to the needy. No. No, 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 no. We are all separated in different class levels. And that is the problem in America. What does that mean? Your class level depends on how much money you have. It all depends on how much money you have. That's depending on how much money you have. That is how we are going to determine your value. I've talked about this in the last two or three chapters. In America, in capitalism today, this goes totally against Jesus. You are valued, you are, your value is measured, not according to God, how God sees you, but according to how much money you have. And that is why... People are running out to get the money. And I'm telling you, this is something Generation X, Gen X, is doing right. They no longer judge their value by their wallet. It's one of the first generations in 80 years to not put a monetary um, value on their personal value. Or a monetary number on their personal value. And I say, good for them. They don't, you know, and this is why I know if the rapture doesn't come for 30 more years, I know society's going to fall apart because every single thing that generation does is 100% against capitalism. They don't, if they got a coffee, if they had to make it at home for 50 cents, that's fine. If they got a coffee and they're hanging out and they're content, they don't need a job. They don't need to pay taxes. They don't need a 401k. That's how I know everything's about to fall apart. Well, the current system. Did you know in, um, I think it's Venezuela, 200% inflation. They just got a um, new president last week. It might be the country next to Venezuela, too. 
They just got a new president last week. And he devalued the money three days ago by 50%, the peso in his country. He said, we're going to get off the peso in the next two or three years and go strictly back to the American dollar. Those poor people have 200% inflation. And they woke up and found out that if they had $100 on them, it's now only worth $50, but the inflation never went down. Wow. See, high-class governments making all the decisions for low-class citizens, we live in a class society. When one high-class government official like a Pharisee says something, he gets one vote. But in today's society, you got to get a thousand low-class people to walk up and down the street with, with signs protesting just to be equal to one vote of one Pharisee. I think you understand what I'm saying. This world see God loves you, but the world sees you as a low-class scumbag. So why are you chasing the world looking for the answer? They're never going to like you. They're never going to love you. They're never going to give you anything you're looking for. Ever. These guys, I've been around them. They'll let you mow their lawn. That's it. They'll hire you to mow their lawn. That would be it. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You see, God's heart is close to you and me, the believers. But their hearts are far away from God. They say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, pass the beer. Praise the Lord, let's smoke another joint. Praise the Lord, I hate my neighbor. They praise the Lord and the same sentence, they hate their neighbor. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank, thank you, God. Ooh, I got to go home and wash that filthy Dave, Dave germs off my hands. You see, with Jesus, hypocrites. Speaking one thing, living completely different. You have no idea the freaky stuff these, these wealthy leaders are doing when they close, they lock the door. And they're in their house alone and no one can see them. You have no idea the freaky stuff they're up to. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Their teachings are not from God. So they will get no credit. It's just human rules. The things they're doing is no better than reincarnation, Buddhism, Hinduism, Far Eastern religion. They're doing nothing better than anybody else. Now, that's according to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man. So I would tend to believe him. Now, it says here, they worship me in vain. You know, in um, the book of Ecclesiastes, it talks about vanity, vanity. Almost everything people do in today's society is done in vain. Now, if you want to be a better Christian, you, you should pay close attention to this right here. Go read the book of Ecclesiastes. It's only 12 chapters. You can have it done by the weekend. Vanity, vanity. Everything you do is in vain, getting you nowhere. That's what God says in Ecclesiastes. Is that how you want to live? You put out all this effort, effort, energy, energy, time, time, money, 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 money. And then the Lord says, everything you just did, you will get no credit for it at all. You did it for yourself. You did it for this world. 
You did it because of envy of your neighbor. And it was done in vain, complete vanity and useless. Wow. That is scary, my friend. That You know how scary that is? Everything you're working towards, God says it's vanity. You're not getting anywhere. Every single payment you make. You know, vanity is like paying off a credit card every month and then, well, not every month, running a big balance, paying off a little and then going back out and charging it, paying it off, then charging it, paying it off and then charging it. You see how it's just useless. I would say the majority of believing Christians in today's society in America, the majority of you, I would say at least 70% of everything you do is vanity in vain. As far as God goes, you're living by man's rules. You're living by a capitalist system. You're not living by the, the word of God or the will of God. You're living like the seagulls. You're not living like the sparrows. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Verse 8. Please, please look that up. You have let go of the commandments of God and are holding on to human traditions. Wow. And he continued, you have a fine way of settling or setting aside the commands of God in order to observe, observe your own traditions. I've said this many times. It's one of my main talking points. People today, Christians today, they say, Lord, I like what you're selling there, Lord. But can you wait here? I have something I have to do, and I'll be back in a little while to talk to you a little bit more. You have a fine way of setting aside the things of God to observe the things of your own traditions. See? Vanity, vanity, vanity. And if you're not saved, you just think you are. If you're lying to yourself about these things, you you might be lying to yourself about salvation. And if you're not saved, you will go to hell. Maybe vanity has blind, completely blinded you into thinking that you're also saved. How can you live like this and claim that you are saved? For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Okay, now check this out. I've known this for most of my life. If you, if, as far as God is concerned, God, the apart, the part of God that's authority, God who has authority, as far as God is concerned, if you, if you cannot obey as a child the authority of your father or your dad and your mom on earth, because it says we're not supposed to call anybody father on earth. If you cannot observe the authority of your parents on earth, when you get older, you're not going to observe the authority of God in heaven. Because you never learned it as a child. As a child, you were given too much leeway, too much slack, and not enough slapping. Not enough spanking. Whether you believe it or not, the Bible says, do not spare the ride from the child. Correct them gently so when they get older, they will not destroy themselves. By not correcting your children, you're, you are setting them up to harm themselves for the rest of their lives. Honor 
honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother be put to death. Okay, now check this out. He's saying if you if you harm your father and mother, you should be put to death in the Old Testament, stoned to death. So, if you cannot follow God's rules as an adult, what will happen to you? You will be put to death in hell for all eternity. If you cannot follow God's rules, you're going to go to hell for all eternity and be put to death. You see how disobey your parents, you should be put to death. But then you, you learn to disobey your parents. So when you get older, you learn to disobey God. And if you die before you become saved, you will be put to death. But you will not die. You will live in hell for all eternity, which is a form of a continual death while you are there. It'll be like dying every single second of the, for the rest of eternity. It'll be horrible. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corban, that is devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. You know, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you know, God, you know how you give, you're supposed to give God 10%. Do you know God never spends that 10%? He doesn't need the money. His hand never touches that money. God the Father would rather get rid of that rule and have us all help the poor widows and orphans and the poor and, and our fathers and mothers in their old age with that 10%. But here's what he's saying. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they are in charge of the money. So when someone comes and says, my parents need help, the Pharisees and teachers of the law say, well, that's not our problem. That's God's money. You, you, we're not helping you. That's God's money. You go help your parents. Do it. Even if the person is in dire need, they will not help. Because they're like TV preachers. Don't you think God wants to drive a new Cadillac? And I had a vision last night. God wants me to drive the Cadillac for him, says the preacher. You see, that's today. Give God money, give God money, give God money. But who is actually getting the money once you send it in? Like if you send a check into a certain ministry, you don't make the check or the money order out to God the Father, do you? You should try it sometime. Make it out to God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, and see if they can cash it. <laughs> They might send it back to you and say, our bank rejected this. You have to make the check out to so-and-so ministries. Now, that's okay. Don't get me wrong. If you checked the ministry out fully and you know what their financial statements are, you know what they're doing, you agree with what they're doing, and you know what they're spending the money on, and you know the minister's yearly salary, salary, not celery like cooking, no. You know the minister's yearly wages. I would say 50% minimum, minimum 50% of all charities in today's society have nothing to do with the work, God's work, the work of God. Nothing. Like when you send money to St. Jude's Hospital, Children's Hospital for terminally ill children, they don't waste the money. St. Jude's has a reputation of taking the money you sent them. They can somehow tenfold it with other donations and save children's lives. 
It's not necessarily a God charity, but it is a good charity to save children who are sick. If you're sending money to someone, make sure it's not the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that is spending the money that you're sending. It's your responsibility to find out where your money's going. Again, Jesus said, again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. See, if you cuss, if you're cussing and using foul language, that doesn't come from outside. That comes from the inside of you. That comes out of your heart from anger, bitterness. The things from the outside cannot harm you. Only the things that come out of your heart, those are the things that harm you spiritually, according to God's rules. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Now his disciples were saying, what did all that mean? Because we have no idea, absolutely no idea what you were talking about. I think Jesus kind of became a little upset with them. Are you so dull, Jesus asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? You can eat a Twinkie or a cupcake. It's not going to defile you spiritually. But if you're cursing your brother and stuff, that's going to defile you spiritually. For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. See, the things that defile a man come out of his heart, not out of his stomach. The things that defile a man come out of his heart, not out of his stomach. We in the world, we want to judge the things that come out of our stomach as what's controlling us in this world. No, it's the things in your heart. Be careful what you look at. That's why pornography is so evil. Pornography goes into your heart and stays there and starts to eat it away and crow it away at it. Pornography makes you look at women as lower class, you know, filthy creatures that are only here for sexual pleasure. These are the things that come in your heart and start to defile you. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. Jesus said all foods are clean in the future from now on, including pork and everything that Jews disagree with. That's another thing Jesus did that Jews didn't like. He went on, Jesus went on. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it was from within... Out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. It's quite a list. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. So you're not supposed to be protecting your flesh in this world. That's good. You're supposed to be protecting yourself spiritually. 
spiritually protecting yourself. That's why all those things, you know, before someone robs a bank, they say in their heart, I'm going to rob a bank. Before someone logs on to pornography.com, they say in their heart, I think I'll look at some pornography right now. Before you start screaming and yelling at your wife and telling her what a horrible person she is, it was in your heart you were becoming angry with your wife. The things that defile a person come from the heart and out of you. Out, of, out into your eyes, out into your lips. The things that come from the outside like foods and go into your stomach. Those things, they can't defile, they just make you fat. But thank God that God does not decide who goes to heaven and who goes to hell by how much you weigh or how much you what you look like or what color your skin is or how much money you have. You can only go to hell by not believing, by refusing to believe that Jesus Christ is is died on the cross for your sins and you believe in God's only son.